Ferry. everyone welcome to my little London garden uh, my name is Emma this is my London garden I'd love you to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're new to my channel last time I did a video in my garden I called it tiny and I got a lot of comments from people saying well if your garden is tiny then ours is a window box <laughs> I've got a tulip right in my face so I think sometimes I forget that I'm really lucky to have a garden and have this outdoor space, particularly living in South London. I know that a lot of people don't have it. I think the reason why I think it's so tiny is because I'm always running out of space. And if I had it my way, I would have about 10 acres of land. So every single space in my garden seems really tiny to me just because I want more of it. I absolutely love being in the garden. I love gardening. And um, yeah, I want the biggest garden possible, but this is what I've got to work with. And boy, do I work with it. I make sure that I fill every single corner of my garden with as many plants and as much stuff as possible because I just love it. Just wanna show you these. I picked these the other day from my garden, um, the most beautiful uh, tulips, and they've got all these petals never grown tulips like these before so these are the Sarah Raven uh, tulip bulbs I brought myself a little pack uh, way back in like October November time and they bloomed and they look absolutely stunning I have picked them now because um, I've well I've got something else there which I'll show you later I've actually put it in a vase and left it in the garden because they are absolutely covered in bugs and um, like little tiny beetles and bugs and spiders and things so I'm just leaving it outside <laughs> because I just don't want to bring all that into my house and I don't really know how to pick flowers and bring them into the house when they're covered in bugs. So if you know how to get the bugs off of flowers, let me know. I'm going to start the vlog by showing you a few new things that I've done in my little garden, which I think you'll like. So firstly, as you can see, we got swing ball for the kids, which actually means that the lawn is completely destroyed. <laughs> Am I angry? Mm, little tiny bit, but at the same time, I'm really happy to see my kids using the garden more and being out here. So we've got a little uh, bald patch there and a bald patch there just where they've been standing and playing it. But how can I be mad? How can I be too mad when my kids are actually outside using the garden, being outdoors in the space? I mean, that's what it's all about. And like I said a few times before, if I had it my way, I wouldn't really have any lawn there at all. I would dig the whole thing over and just have plants and flowers and everything growing there. Um, so I can't complain too much. In here, I've got these, oh, I can't remember what they are called. I think they're called alliums. Um, and I know that they are from the onion family actually, which is quite funny. I have just come into flower and they are absolutely stunning. I had a lot more than three, but um, for some reason only three have come up this year. But look how tall they are. I didn't realize they got this tall and so unusual because their leaves are gone. Now either they've been eaten or they've just died or they don't have leaves. No, they've been eaten, I think. Um, but yeah, look how tall it is. <laughs> I'm not sure how good they look in this little bed here. I think what, what they would work better in is a border, a nice full border, and then having these sort of sticking up through the border. But I do love them. And they've, um, they've got so many flowers on them. They're absolutely stunning. And the bees love them. And the bees also love this too, which has gone a bit crazy in here. I don't actually remember what this is, but they love it and it's stunning. So I'm leaving it. I have this beautiful prunish tree at the back of my garden and a lot of you always, oh, I'm walking right under it, a lot of you always ask what it is, it's a prunus adelaide and it has the most beautiful blossom in the springtime and then it goes green and then it gets berries in the summer which the birds absolutely love um, and it's just starting to get a couple of berries now. So the tree is, oh, oh no I've just knocked it off. <laughs> Goodness. okay so I went to show you a berry and I just completely knocked it off and killed it here's another one I'm starting to question if they're actually berries now or if they're just the end of the the flower or something but I've got a few of these and I think the birds are always after them so is this a berry I think it's a berry I have a feeling it's a berry but they're, they're all over the tree um, and the birds seem to love them so whatever they are they're here and they're here to stay as long as I don't push them off um, and then I've got some pots down here that had tulips in now that the tulips are finished I stuffed in a couple I whacked in should I say um, a couple of dahlia tubers and they are starting to come up now you can see they're starting to grow and the slugs and snails don't seem to be getting to these um, because I don't think they know that they're here I have got strolch on it but then over here 
I have another one coming up in this pot here and then I, I've put another one in the middle of these tulips and I need to take these out today because like I can see we've got Mr Snail coming to have a look um, that one might have been a little bit munched on but yeah I think when I remove the tulips they seem to be leaving the ones in the pots alone unfortunately this, the same cannot be said for the ones that I put out in the garden which seem to just be munched like no tomorrow um, okay another thing that I've changed in the garden I'm very excited about this and if you follow me on my Instagram at Emma's Allotment Diaries you might already have seen this it is my sweet pea teepee Oh yes, the Sweet Pea TP is back this year. I didn't grow it last year um, because I was trying out other other things. But this year, I had this area free. This is where my tulips were. They're now gone. Here are the Sweet Peas they're in. So the TP, very simple to make. It's just bamboo canes. And then at the top, I've used these, um, what they call cable ties, just to hold them together. And I've also dug them into the ground, which keeps them even more secure. And then to secure the structure, I've just got this twine, which I've wrapped all around. And then all of my sweet peas are all out along the bottom. Some of them are getting tall, so I've tied them in just to help them out. Some of them are still little, so they're just sort of balancing like that until they get big enough to tie in. And then the entire thing has been covered with strolch, which so far seems to be keeping all of the slugs and snails away. Fingers crossed it still does. And I actually found their home. So over here I had two sunflowers which have been completely eaten, which is such a shame because I was really excited about those. They're really big ones. Um, here are the snails. They hide under this trellis because it's wooden. I think they really like it. Oh, look, there's a ladybird. That's the first ladybird I've seen of the year. The first ladybird, how exciting. You can stay mate, he's a happy pest. Um, these are not happy pests, these are slugs and snails. So what I'm doing is I'm coming out at night time and removing them and then just chucking them over the back of the fence. And just doing that and removing them every night seems to be helping massively with the sweet peas uh, because none of them have been munched yet. So I'm, I'm guessing that's what's helping, but who knows, I mean, they are just, they're just relentless, these slugs and snails this year, aren't they? I think we've just had really good weather for them. So rain, sun, rain, sun, like over and over again. And that's just what brings them out. So what can we do? Right, I've changed one of the borders, basically. What was happening down here is I bunged too many plants in one area and they were all struggling to survive. So I moved a couple of these foxgloves last year. So I had them over there and you can see some of them are still there, but I've moved some of them around the garden. I didn't realize how tall they get. Look at this foxglove, he's right up here. Isn't that unbelievable? So apparently they're biannual, which means that they live for two years. So at the end of this year, it'll die. Um, hopefully I'll let it sort of set seed so they can come up again. But this is what they do on the second year. They get really tall. But as you can see, there is an apple tree in the way. So what I was hoping to do with this apple tree, because it's just like two branches, is train it to go sort of along the fence like that. So it's sort of like a fenced apple tree. I can't remember what they're called. Is it cordial, cordy something, cord, cordial apple tree or something, I don't know. But it's the one where you train it along the fence and it kind of spreads um, and grows a bit like a rose, like a rambling rose or something, and you just push it against it. And then I think this area here will look better. Because I don't think that tree's going to get any bushier or any better, not anytime soon anyway. So push that against the fence. Then I've got my lovely foxglove. Here I've got my clematis which has sort of grown over the top of this and I don't really know what to like where it should go now I might have to go sort of on my neighbour's trellis I don't really know what to do with that um, but it's doing really well and this is one that I thought was dead and it's definitely not dead uh, so when I planted it it looked dead and I thought oh no that's a goner now look at it insane never give up on your plants you see never give up because they don't give up I've moved the rose bush um, because he needed some more space he's doing really well this year he's brand new um, I don't know what that is, but I really like it. Here's some more foxgloves, but as you can see, there's a peony behind it. Now, I thought this was dead. <laughs> there are a lot of plants in my garden that I assume are dead and then are not dead and they just come back to life. And then I don't know what to do because I put something else in the way. This peony is a prime example. So I thought it was dead because it didn't do anything last year. So I thought, okay, I killed it. 
decided but I wanted this area filled so I put the foxglove in front which is now doing amazing and really really tall and now this has decided to grow isn't it you've decided to grow this year so hopefully I mean hopefully they'll be okay together this year because this this won't last again this is biannual that'll be dead at the end of the year sorry mate um and then hopefully that will keep going and surviving but I don't know I mean they look quite nice together so far hopefully they don't fight too much over here this is my last remaining sunflower the last one the only one that has survived <laughs> and he's been a little bit munched but his leaves in the middle are okay so hopefully he grows and then here I've got more sweet peas more sweet peas oh there's a little dahlia behind him seems to be surviving quite well yeah more sweet peas that are going to go over this archway that I put at the front of the garden showing you the whole archway why not um, and then on this side, these are my big daisies, you know those plants that get really, really tall. The only thing with these is that you can see already they're like a hotel for slugs and snails, but I really like them. They get really big and really, really tall. Just realized that I'm wearing my good jeans. <sighs> no, grass stain is just the hardest thing to get out of jeans, and these are my best pair. Why did I wear these? Why? <laughs> I'm clearing a lot of the tulips and daffodils um, because I've got other things to come up. So there's some Rebecca in here somewhere. Somewhere there is a Rebecca plant in there, and I need it to have more light to be able to grow. There it is. I don't know if this is even going to grow. Is it dead? It might be dead but if it's not it'll be there um, and then I think I've got um, a dahlia over here somewhere but it all needs more light so you can see now how I've got these patches and I'm going to start planting new things in these patches that I'm making I'm going to leave the forget-me-nots a bit longer because the pollinators really love it and I think it's really pretty <laughs> In a couple of these spots I've got my dahlias and they're going to be quite big but in this one here oh, I don't have anything growing in it now that I've taken my tulips out so I'm going to stick in some zinnias I found some zinnia seeds sitting in my bedroom just on the side casually as you do also there seems to be a rogue it's either a tooth or a sweet corn sweet corn seed in there as you do so I'm going to top it up with some more compost goes we better take the rogue sweet corn out just in case he grows <laughs> can you imagine give it a bit of water I'd absolutely love to plant some of these in my borders but I really think the slugs and snails will just go mad and eat them all and what we're going to do is we're going to stroke Stroach it up. My thick layer of stroach on the top there. Now, because this is a pot, slugs and snails love to hide around the edges. What I'm actually going to do, even though we did an experiment and found out that they don't really care, I'm still going to use some copper tape around my pot in the hope it just deters them again. Like I said, you've always got to use like more than one approach um, to tackle slugs and snails. Like one is not enough. You've got to do like 10. <laughs> so we'll copper tape it up as well. I don't want it to look horrible. Oh, it's not straight at all. Yeah, that's a bit better. 
hopefully that just gives a little bit of extra protection but we'll find out <laughs> Let's go take a look at the little vegetable plot at the bottom here. Despite the fact it looks a little bit messy today, probably my favourite part of the garden. And now I've got this little one here too. Look how well this one is doing. This is my zest vegetable planter and um, it's just doing incredible. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six rows in here of different things and everything is growing. It's had very little damage, if any at all. And then round here, this is my herb planter from Zest Outdoor Living and look how incredible this is doing. I mean the mint has gone a little bit crazy. I'm not entirely sure what to do with that. I might have to chop it back a little bit today. Um, but everything in here is just doing swimmingly. Um, I've got my potatoes down here. Look at those. Doing so good. I've got a blueberry plant which has been a little bit damaged but um, I think I might get some blueberries from him. And I need to clear a lot of these um, tulips. Just a quick note, don't forget that I've got a discount code for these, so if you follow the link below you can get the Think Green um, recycled plastic bottle gloves. I think they're made from recycled plastic bottles. You can get them below um, for a discount if you click my link. And also, a lot of people ask about my shoes. Let's see if I can do a little shoe tap dance. <laughs> uh, these are from a brand called Flit Flop and I'll link these below as well. They sent me these just as a bit of a freebie to try out. I think they're quite snazzy. Um, they're very useful gardening shoes, a bit like Crocs, but not Crocs. You know, like Sturdier, a bit like Wellies. I don't know, I mean, they are what they are. They're that, so. <laughs> That's me modeling shoes. I'll never be a shoe model, I know. Right, we need to get rid of some of these tulips here because they just become houses for slugs and snails and they just eat everything, so. I need to go. In my little greenhouse here, I've got loads of stuff growing, just like tons of stuff. My leeks are going a little bit funny. They look like they're sort of dying a little bit. They're turning a little bit yellowy and they're just looking a little bit sad. And I don't know whether you have to repot leeks or not, but I think I'm going to. I've never heard anyone potting on leeks. You will now because I'm going to do it. I don't know if you should do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Right, not entirely sure how to do this. We're just going to go for it. I've sewn these into coir. And I'm wondering if there's just not enough nutrients to sustain them now. Like maybe they need more food. So I'm going to sew them into multi-purpose compost. I've just snapped him. I know he might live. I'll whack him in. Oh, he's got some big roots. Maybe they're just hungry. Maybe he just needs some compost. Oh, how do, how do I get him in there then? The roots are going everywhere, mate. Put him in the hole. Come on. I've got to get in my hole. That's it. The only thing I really know about leeks, and this is just from what somebody else has told me, look at that one, how am I supposed to get that in the bleeding hole? The only thing I know is that you're not supposed to plant them out until they're the size of pencils. And that's all I know. So I'm not putting them outside yet because they're not, I mean, that's not a pencil to me. I guess it depends on the size of the pencil, but I assume you mean a bog standard HD sort of pencil, not like an RT one or something. They look all right. I don't know. I think I think this is right. I just feel like it's right. So we'll just keep going, I think. The way I'm just like pushing these roots into the hole. I've never done this with a plant before. It's so strange. It's like they're all spindly everywhere and I'm trying to force them into a little hole. I don't feel like they'll be happy with that, but I think, you know, they just have to make do. Very weird plants, leeks. They sort of look like little octopuses. Do you know what I mean? Like that. It's like an octopus. Ooh. And I'm trying to force the octopus to be a pencil. That's what it is. That's what you do with leeks. You're forcing octopuses to be octopuses or octopi. What was it? Just octopus. You're forcing an octopus to be a pencil. 
that's what you're doing when you grow a leek. That is the definition of leeks. Octopuses that need to be pencils. I don't know if it's octopus, octopi, octopuses. Oh, I killed that one. Sorry, mate. Next, better luck next time. Or not, because you're already dead. If these all grow really well, I'm going to be eating leeks for the rest of my life, I think. And I like leeks, but I don't like love leeks. Like, I wouldn't eat leeks for breakfast, you know? It's always the crop that I sort of think is alright, that grows really well, and I end up with a million of them. Why is that? Right, we have, I assume successfully, potted on a load of leeks. There they are, in a new pot. And then with this stuff, I don't really know what to do with it. So what I'm going to do is actually keep it in the old um, greenhouse. I know a lot of it will die because I've uprooted it and stuff, but you know, just in case a few of them survive or whatever, I'm just going to keep that. And the thing is, right, what's really funny is whenever I say, like, I'm just going to throw that in the compost heap, someone will always comment, don't throw it in there because you'll get a million of them just growing. Really? Are you serious? Because I struggle to grow leeks or anything, like, when I'm actually intentionally doing it, but if you're telling me that if I just throw stuff in a compost heap and it will just start growing like wildfire, why don't I just do that? turn my whole allotment plot into one big compost heap and just chuck everything in it and everything will grow because whenever I chuck something in a compost heap someone says don't throw that in there it will start growing <laughs> hope you enjoyed my little garden vlog today if you did do subscribe to my channel and i will see you next week have a lovely gardening weekend bye <laughs>